Cash is trash. He knows. Jeff knows it. Musk knows it. Cash is trash. Been to cash. Cash is trash. Anyway, uh, so in Rich Dad Poor Dad, I said savers are losers. And guess what? They are. Cash is trash. The first thing I do every day is look at my cash accounts to figure out where can I get rid of this trash. Cash is trash. So here's what I want you to do. Relax. Breathe in. Breathe out. And I want to share with you in this episode the absolute worst advice to avoid in 2022 in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad. Happening three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping. Now I'm winning like I'm Jada. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches. Now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Sapali here. Hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And here is another episode of Vlogmas 2021. What is Vlogmas? Well, we are creating and uploading a video every day from December 1st all the way until Christmas, a video of value to help you think like a millionaire, to strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire in 2022 and beyond. If you feel that we're helping you out, please click like. And oh, by the way, we have a goal to get into 150,000 subs because once we get there, on behalf of the squad, that's right, you and I, we're going to award a church charity or nonprofit $5,000 on behalf of the squad, you and I, to help them help other people. Okay, so what is this worst advice? I'll just get right into it. The worst advice is this, that cash is trash. That's right, that's the worst advice. Cash is trash. Everybody right now is advocating that you should drain your bank accounts, you should drain your savings accounts, and put it to all of these fancy things that you can find online. I mean, you are bombarded every day. Invest in this, invest in this, put your money here, put your money there, pa 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 pa. It's so confusing. And here's the thing, you cannot put yourself in a situation where philosophically, product-wise, opportunity-wise, investment-wise, this is the right thing to do for this time in this era. Matt, in the bad times, invest money here. In the good times, invest your money here. No, 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 you can't have that type of philosophy. You gotta put something where it's good, it transcends the test of time. All seasons, it happens, it has successful outcomes. It has to have what we call evergreen values and principles, especially as it relates to your money. And so you have to understand that no matter what situation you're going to go through, whether you're broke or whether you're rich, are you saving or you're investing, the bottom line is you need cash. You need money. And for most people right now, for many of you, especially coming to and through and out of this pandemic, it's a time for you to make sure you solidify your cash flow. In other words, you need cash. So when I was sharing this concept, when I was sharing a story, uh, where was I? We're in Orange County this past Saturday. I shared a simple story of how my savings helped catapult me from a kid just making $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marines to now starting to make some money in the insurance business, the first career, first industry, first business I started my endeavors in, but how the power and the habit of saving just a little bit and just a little bit more, and just a little bit more, and just a little bit more, and not doing anything crazy with my money created a habit in me not to overspend. So therefore, I am ready for opportunities. So let's take a look here at this clip of how I shared the power of your savings and what it did to me, turning a little bit of cash here, a little bit of cash here into a large amount of savings. And what I did with that finance is when I finally had the door of opportunity open up in front of me, let's take a look at this clip. So after cigars with me, it's like, I think maybe midnight, one o'clock, I said, listen, Sheena took the truck home. Because at that time, Sheena and I, for the first three, three and a half years of our business, we only had one car. <laughs> we made 100,000 in uh, nine months, we made 250, and 14 months, we made half a million, 17 months, cash flow millionaires in 37 months. We still had one car. <laughs> for the first three years of the business, I didn't even look at the bank account. Babe, you got it because I'm working in a level of pissed off activity. <laughs> Is that a word? <laughs> pissed off activity. I was, I was just, I, I came to PHP angry about what's going on in my life. I'm 42 years old and life is just passing me by. But what the hell's going on? I asked one of the guys after cigars to drop me off at the house. And uh, he's like, no problem. I can't wait to drop off my upline and check out his house, yeah. right? <laughs> I said, make a left here, make a right. Oh, cool, nice neighborhood, cool, okay, nice, all right. 
And then, and then uh, all right, where do I turn next? He, I'm like, bro, you're in front of my house. <laughs> He's like, this is it? <laughs> this is where a millionaire lives? This is where an upline lives? Everybody, don't worry about it. It's, it's not going to impress you. But what were we doing? What do, you, what do you think we were doing? Part of our business plan was to capitalize. So I had, I had some money saved up. And the Great Recession hits. And uh, a, guy, a guy I just knew from the cigar community, he's like, yo, Sapala, uh, I just got divorced, man. She's, she's taking me through the ringer. I need to sell my Bentley. I just bought it. I said, okay. He goes, make me an offer. I need to check now. Insult me. <laughs> Wait, bro. I remember when you first brought this thing. It was a Continental GT. Nice, bro. Blue. I know, you, I know what you paid for it, man. I was like, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm going to insult you. I, dude, I just need to check. 50? Dude. 50? You told me to insult you. Okay, 60. That's all I got. Done. I cut my check for 60000 Okay? What do you think I do with it? I, I, I'm a single dad. I got three kids. It's a two-seater. What do I need a Continental GT? So I flip it. What I sell it for? 90. Because I had savings in two weeks, well, my 60 grew to 90. You, know, you, guys, you guys follow me so far? Yes. Okay, so I'm doing an annual review with a, with a client. This is before Bay Shop Building, I was just a producer. Doing an annual with a client, annual review, blah, 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 blah. So how you doing, how you doing, how you doing, good. Any updates? Yeah, I, do. I have an update. I gotta put my great aunt in a nursing home. This guy worked at a newspaper. I said, okay, so what do you need? I need to sell her her townhouse. Do you know anybody they can buy it in the next two weeks. Because I'm cleaning it out. Okay. Give me the address. I'll look at the address. Okay, it's right next to a college. I can rent out to a student. Okay, hey, I'll buy it. So just make me an offer. I said, uh, 85? <laughs> Come on, man. Okay, you said two weeks. Fine, 90. Guess where I got the 90 from? From selling the car two weeks <laughs> previous. So it's not like I was dig digging deeper in my pocket. I go to the title company, I cut, I cut him a $90,000 certified check, and I go into the house, it needs a gut rehab. It's, it's work. I need a new furnace, HVAC, kitchen, bathroom. So what do I do? I'll just leave the, the furnace for, for the new owner, but what improves the property value of the house the most? Kitchen and bathrooms. So I improved the kitchen and bathroom, dumped another, dumped another 510 into it, so I'm out, out of pocket, 9,000. I took another five, 10,000 of my own pocket to pay a contract. I created a job, right? I created a job, helped the contractor, which was the, which is the father of my assistant. So her dad does construction and rehab. So I, I helped not only my assistant, but I put more money into the family because I decided to become an entrepreneur and become a good saver. Okay. 90 days later, I sell it for 125. So my 60 turned into 90, turned into 125. That's why I want you to be a good saver. That makes sense? Yeah. So when this recession hits and you got savings, you're gonna have cash to create opportunities for yourself. You're just gonna be printing money. All right, so what was your biggest takeaway from that clip? Put it in the comment section below. What was the biggest takeaway in that clip? Now, if you don't have anything to add in the comment section below, you're trying to process your takeaway, put this affirmation down. Put this affirmation down in the comment section below. I am saving more money in 2022. I am saving more money in 2022. And, and I don't want you to get too wrapped up in all these get rich quick schemes. Money that you build, cash flow to cash, leads to savings and investments. Oftentimes you hear from these gurus, oh, I just turned $500 into $200,000 into $400,000. True. Well, guess what a lot of these guys had? They had operating businesses, for a majority of them, they had these operating businesses, and based on cash and cash equivalents that they had on hand, boom, they moved into opportunities. So oftentimes people are thinking, you need to put all your money here in this crypto, you need to put all your money here into this forex, you need to put all your money here into this NFT. Slow down, pump the brakes, pump the brakes. First thing you have to establish in 2022 is something where you have cash flow coming in above and beyond an asset that can give you income above and beyond your expenses. So as your money is coming in, seriously consider minimizing your expenses and increasing all the time your cash flow and cash flow opportunities, because that will lead then to cash, will lead you to savings, will lead you to investments, and leave you to uh, 
explosion in your financial life. One last thing I want to share with you. This poem was shared with me. This little blurb was shared with me on the power of your savings. It reads like this. The state of your savings does have a lot to do with how tall you walk. Your savings affect the way you stand, the way you walk, the tone of your voice, your physical well-being, and your self-confidence. A person without savings is always running. He or she must. He must take the first job offered, or nearly so. She sits nervously on life's shares because any small emergencies throw her into the hands of others. Without savings, a person must be too grateful. Now, gratitude is a fine thing in its place, but a constant state of gratitude is a horrible place in which to live. A person with savings can walk tall. He may appraise opportunities in a relaxed way, have time for judicious estimates, and not be rushed by economic necessity. A person with savings can afford to resign from her job if her principles so dictate, and for this reason, she will never need to do so. A person who can afford to quit is much more useful to his company and therefore more readily promoted. He can afford to give his company the benefit of his most candid judgments. A person with savings can afford the wonderful privilege of being generous in family and neighborhood emergencies. He can take the level stare of any man, friend, stranger, or enemy. And that ability shapes her personality and her character. The ability to save has nothing to do with the size of income. Many high-income people spend it all, darting through life like minnows. But as the dean of American bankers, J.P. Morgan, once said, and advised to his young broker, take waste out of your spending. You'll drive the haste out of your life. If you don't need money for college, a home, or retirement, then save for your self-confidence. And with the self-esteem and peace of mind that comes from having savings, walking tall through life. Powerful poem, huh? By the way, put it in the comment section below how you're going to be walking in 2022. Put it in the comment section right here. I am walking tall in 2022. I am walking tall in 2022. Before I let you go, to get more context on how to implement this, check out this video right here. Five mindset hacks by my mentor, Patrick Ben David, to help you become a first generation cash flow millionaire. And the other one here, which might sting a little bit, check out this video here about millionaire confessions. You're not broke, you're just lazy. <laughs> so check out this video right here. With that being said, drop your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your feedback, put it in the comment section below. Are you taking something here from Vlogmas 2021? I hope so, please put it in the comment section below. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe and notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. See you tomorrow.